Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown, and in this video, I'm going to do a thermal paste smackdown. And my guinea pig is my Sager NP9873 with a desktop i7 7700K CPU. And, uh, you know, it does run pretty hot, so it is a good guinea pig for this test. So what I'm going to be using, I've got the, uh, the thermal grizzly, grizzly conductor nord. I've got GLID Solutions GC Extreme. I've got Arctic MX4. And finally, some IC Diamond. So in my video, I'll show you how I'd be just doing the repaste on, on, on one of them and the same procedure would, would apply for, for all of them. I'm gonna do the CPU and GPU so let's see how we get on. So before starting, make sure to use an anti-static wrist strap. You don't want to uh, short out any components. You then want to disconnect the battery. So let's uh, unscrew it. Let's unscrew the CPU heatsink. First one corner, then the opposite corner, and then do the subsequent corners after. If your CPU is cool, you may want to use a hairdryer just to heat it up and it'll make it easier to remove. You should be able to pick up the heat pipe and heat sink and just uh, lay it to one side. It's then time to clean up the glob of thermal paste on the CPU and also on the heat sink. I was given this tip by Mr. Fox to use these uh, alcohol prep pads to uh, remove the thermal paste. They're typically 70% alcohol and they work really well. You can also use solutions like this uh, by Arctic Silver, which is uh, great uh, if the thermal paste is thick and uh, particularly hard to get off. So finish cleaning it up and then it's time to start on the GPU. So repeat the same process, removing the screws and then uh, the heatsink. You'll notice that the thermal paste application on the GPU is poor. No wonder it was so hot. Since the Sager NP9873 comes with a desktop i7-7700K CPU, I'm going to delid it. And for here, I'm using the uh, Rocket 88 delid tool. It comes in uh, two halves, and you can buy it on Amazon for about $42. As you would when placing a CPU in the socket, line up the triangle of the CPU with the triangle on the base of the rocket tool. Now one good tip uh, given by Mr. Fox is to mark using a sharpie pen on the heat spreader of the CPU, that triangle point, so when you remove the, uh, the heat spreader, you know which way to put it back on. Then place on the second half of the rocket tool on top of the CPU. Now this will be a speeded up tutorial on, on a delidding. For more details, uh, check out Mr. Fox's uh, channel. Using three thumb screws, attach the uh, top half of the rocket tool to the, to the base. Using the supplied Allen wrench, tighten up the uh, screw at the end, and this pushes the integrated heat spreader off the CPU, and you'll hear a good old clicking sound when it's done. Then loosen the screw at the end and remove all the three thumb screws at the top. And there you have it. The CPU and the heat spreader are separated and you can see the uh, thermal interface that Intel puts in there which is rather poor that uh, makes the contact. So objective is to clean all this up and uh, put some uh, conductor nord in its place. They supply a wooden stick which you can use to uh, scrape away the, the, the glue or the adhesive here on the, uh, the CPU base. Uh, you can use your fingernail or a piece of plastic. Don't use metal because that will uh, damp scratch it and damage it. Just do your best and try and uh, get, uh, get most of it off. Then just do the same around the edge of the uh, heat spreader here uh, on the base where all the glue was. You don't have, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but you know just try and clean it up a bit. Since I'm using liquid metal on the die here and it's conductive, um, I put a little bit of tape on those connectors there. You can use uh, uh, clear nail varnish as well, but tape uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't come off and it's, it's easy to do. So just put that on. I find the easiest way to spread the uh, conductor knot is using a brush. Thank you. 
So I also want to put some liquid metal on the underside of the heat spreader itself as well. And uh, you'll notice I've got the, the I've marked off where the arrow is on the uh, the PCB there. So I have it the right orientation. Mr. Fox uh, had another good tip, uh, mapping out where to put the liquid metal on uh, the underside here, using uh, electrical tape to uh, mark off the desired area. And use the same brushing method to apply the liquid metal to, to this area as well. Peel off the uh, tape and then you're ready to uh, stick it back on. Just apply then some uh, super glue to the corners of the underside of the uh, integrated heat spreader. And then carefully place it uh, down on top of the die. The rocket tool comes with a piece of plastic which you, you, you put over the uh, the heat spreader and that just uh, lines everything up nicely for you. Then using the other piece of plastic that comes in the kit, um, screw in the three thumb screws. Then uh, use the last uh, thumb screw, it's a larger one, through the center and this just puts pressure on top of the heat spreader. And leave it to, to set for uh, say 5-10 minutes. Once set, put the CPU back into the socket, close up the bracket and get ready to uh, apply your thermal paste. I will show how each paste is uh, easy to spread and uh, first up here is uh, IC Diamond and this is not easy to spread at all. By comparison, the Arctic MX4 is much much easier to spread. The GLID GC Extreme is somewhere in between the IC Diamond and the Arctic MX4. It spreads okay, but it uh, is pretty viscous, so you heating it up a little bit does help. So finally, the conductor note. And before applying it, I uh, cover the uh, contact points with uh, clear nail varnish. And as before, use a brush to spread it nicely. So let's have a look and see how they perform. First up is in Time Spy and uh, looking at the CPU temperatures and uh, here I use the, both uh, the auto fan and max fan on the uh, laptop just see what difference there is and I compare it to the uh, stock paste so as you can see the stock paste was pretty hot 93 degrees um, using the auto fan and uh, 79 uh, max fan so the worst performing paste was the arctic mx4 it saved off uh, 8 degrees celsius uh, from uh, the stock paste using the auto fan and 11 degrees was shaved off using the, the max fan. Now coming in uh, third was the IC Diamond. This shaved off uh, 10 degrees using the auto fan and uh, 13 degrees using the max fan. Second place was the conductor note, quite a surprise there. 14 degrees shaved off both in uh, using the auto fan and also using the max fan. And the, the, the champion, what uh, the pace that actually won this was the GLID GC Extreme. Um, 16 degrees reduction using the auto fan and 14 degrees on the max fan. Moving on to handbrake, which is a, a lengthy test, a good old 30 minutes, um, stressing the CPU. And we see the uh, Arctic MX4 again coming in last, um, only reducing the CPU by uh, net 1 degrees using the auto fan and uh, switching it to the max fan and reducing it by uh, 12 degrees. And coming in third this time is the uh, GLID GC Extreme and reducing the uh, CPU temperature by 1 degrees on the auto fan and uh, 17 degrees using the max fan. Second place is the Thermal Grizzly Conductor Note, reducing the CPU by 2 degrees on the auto fan and uh, 17 degrees on the max fan. And the winner this time goes to the IC Diamond reducing the CPU by 3 degrees on the auto fan and 18 degrees on the max fan. So if we average out all the uh, CPU temperatures and uh, see what reduction we get from the stock and the winner is actually a joint winner it's the uh, conductor node and the GLID GC Extreme um, giving a 24 degree reduction uh, combined which is great and uh, Third place comes to the IC Diamond with uh, a 22 degree uh, temperature reduction. And uh, finally, in last place, is the Arctic MX4, quite far behind with a combined uh, of 16 degree reduction. Now, onto the uh, GPU. I actually only applied one paste here, the IC Diamond. I was concerned that I'd uh, damaged the uh, thermal pads. But uh, nevertheless, I did see a benefit 
not so much at the auto fan that was pretty much the same but uh, at the max fan i did get a 14 degree reduction which i think is great i hope you guys found that useful and i think you know in addition to uh, undervolting your laptop repasting is another good uh, thing to do because you know you do get some good benefits depending on the cooling system on the laptop now of course like say my lenovo yoga 720 the, uh, the 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 cooling system there was not that so robust so using the uh, auto fan on here did show that you know even with this you know on the cpu would get between four and uh, eight degrees a uh, reduction in temperature you know so that's not well that's okay but uh, as soon as you apply more you know more fans to it um, you are getting um, you know 12 to 16 uh, reduction so that's quite a quite a big change and then of course even on the on the gpu side of things even bigger up to 19 degrees celsius uh, change uh, with uh, with more uh, f fan power so it's worthwhile doing now of course not all laptops uh, you can uh, do the delidding of course most of the laptops will have soldered on uh, cpus and gpus um, but certainly if you do have uh, a desktop version of, of a cpu in your laptop like you do here then it's worth doing that delidding because that uh, certainly also uh, also helps and um, <coughs> you know of course each of these thermal pastes have, uh, have ratings in, uh, in watts per meter Kelvin. And, you know, I mean, you look at uh, IC Diamond is 4.5 watts per meter Kelvin, uh, whilst Arctic uh, MX4 and uh, the uh, GLID Extreme, GC Extreme, is 8.5. Um, you would think then, therefore, that the uh, Arctic MX4 would be better than the IC Diamond. Well, that didn't prove to be the case. IC Diamond was better than that. So, you know, you can take some of these uh, with a pinch of salt. Look at uh, Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut, that's uh, 73 watts uh, per meter Kelvin, um, much more conductive, which indeed, you know, if uh, um, probably on, on a desktop situation where you have more airflow and that, you'll see better rewards, but when the airflow and the fans aren't uh, good enough to take, take, take the heat away, you're not going to see the same type of uh, results. And indeed, in my testing, the uh, Conductonaut was equally as good as the uh, GLID GC Extreme. Now, another thing you've got to bear in mind is how easy are these uh, pastes to, uh, to apply. Now, the uh, Arctic MX4 was the easiest. That spread on very nicely, but that performed the worst. Um, GLID Extreme was a little bit tough. I would uh, heat that up with my hairdryer, or you can put it in some uh, hot water or something, and uh, that would help it spread a little bit better. Um, Icy Diamond, that was uh, tough to spread. Um, best way was just to, to put, uh, say, like, a, like an X or star-shaped in glob, and then apply the heat sink thermal conductor uh, the thermal grizzly conductor note that's a little bit tough i find the best way is to use a, 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 a light one of those thin little paint brushes and just push the top of the surface along to spread it out so that takes a little bit of practice but once you've got the hang of it that's not bad at all so um, anyway i hope you found that uh, good thanks again for watching subscribe and i'll see you next time bye